I'm really quite excited to get into this parcel because in here is something I just didn't think I'd be able to find anymore. It's a new old stock open reel tape recorder. It dates from, I think, the mid-1980s. It's a five-inch reel, quarter-inch tape, half-track mono device. It's the UA Report Monitor 4000. And uh, there's an interesting story behind this because this isn't just something I found on eBay. This came from a company in Germany that has a stock of these. They've got the last few models that came off the production line. They've still got them sealed in their original boxes together with accessories and spares. Uh, it's a couple of brothers who back in the 1980s, they did their apprenticeships at a company called ATIS Assman that owned Ua. And later on, they, uh, I think they went on to do other things, but they kept in touch with people from the company and found out that this company was planning on reorganising. So they asked if they were able to acquire the existing stock of Ua machines, spares and accessories. And that's how can I found them, because they've got this website where they're uh, offering those for sale. I asked them how many have they got of these and they said they don't really know because every time they sell one, they open up the box and revitalise it, make sure it's working before they send it on. So effectively, what you're getting here is something that nobody makes anymore, the last of the line, and yet it's been checked over and uh, sent to you in working condition. So I think that is really quite interesting. Uh, so look, without any further ado, let's get into this parcel and see exactly what I've got. So in the top of the parcel here is my receipt. You can see I paid a total of 527 euros to get it sent to me. But that's not just the tape recorder. I've also got a microphone here and a battery, a little cable to go with it, and of course the shipment cost. And it might sound like a lot of money, and it is a considerable amount of money, but I think they could pretty much charge whatever they wanted. I think this is a very fair price because just think, I mean, where else are you going to get one? Right, so they've sealed it back down again. Let me get my knife on here. But of course they have been in, which I'd rather they had if they just sent me one that was sealed that didn't work. That wouldn't be as good, would it? So I'm uh, the second person to go into this since this thing was uh, manufactured. Right, now this must be the quality control card. And I think I've been giving you the wrong dates up to this point. Because if this is right, look at that. 3rd of July, 96. I mean, it looks like a 9. That's got 96 at the end of it as well. 3196. So I've got the operating instructions that are in German, French and English. They also supplied me with a PDF of these um, when I did the order so I could read it before it arrived. There was something I saw in here that was very interesting to me because it mentioned how the different speeds affect the um, frequency response. And uh, I haven't seen it written down this simply before, but you can see there, hopefully, if you can't, I'll scan this in and show it. But uh, at the bottom, you've got the fastest speed, seven and a half inches per second, 20 to 25,000 hertz or 25 kilohertz. And then as you reduce the speed, the top end goes down. So at the slowest speed, which is 15 sixteenths inches per second, not easy to say, it only goes to 6,000 hertz at the top. Proper circuit diagram. Put that on a wall, couldn't you? Like a poster. Don't know, maybe not. Now, ideally, I would have wanted this stereo one here, or that one. But as it is, I've only been able to get hold of this mono one, because that's the last one that they had stock of. But that's a nice brochure, isn't it? Right, anyway, enough about the paperwork. Let's have a look at the thing itself. That really is a sight I thought I'd never see. Effectively brand new. Anyway, let's try and get this out of here without breaking it. There we go. I might as well put the handle on it. The way this attaches, I've noticed these are spring-loaded. Okay, so just position them over either end. It goes on like that. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Now, of course, you could put that underneath to have it sort of standing up like that. I also noticed that uh, on the back here, you've got rubber feet as well. That was a plastic one, of course, being on the top part, but these ones here. So you could use it that way up if you wanted to as well. It's just amazing seeing one of these in mint condition, because you'll see them quite often on eBay, and they've really had a hard life. And you can understand why, because they've been carried around all over the place, dropped and all sorts of stuff. But there's quite a lot of switches on here that I don't think would survive in normal use for very long. For example, these plastic switches for battery and light here. There's... Um, a switch between the source and the tape 
that sticks out quite a way and that's plastic as well. I could imagine that getting snapped off easily. These are metal and uh, as is that, I think it is anyway, yeah. Oh, that's got a good clump to it when you change the, the speed. And then this is the record dial here. Got a few little LEDs there, speaker on the top. Okay, now this opens up with a coin. So let's just turn that and then this whole bottom should come off. There we go. When it comes to powering it, you've got a few different options. You've got uh, five D cells, which would go in here. You get four in the bottom there and one sideways at the top. But I bought this uh, separate lead acid battery. So I'm gonna pop that in here. I assume this thing just charges up as you use it. So let's have a look. That's gonna be negative on that side. So it goes in this way around. Yeah, so that slots in there neatly. I'll just put the bottom cover back on there. A couple of specs out of the manual. If you're using five alkaline D cells to power the thing, you'll get about five hours out of them. If you're using the battery pack that I've got, the lead acid battery, that will also get you about five hours. And on the specifications at the back here, the wow and flutter measures at approximately 0.15% at seven and a half inches per second, or 0.2 at three and three quarters. Now that's the power socket there, the one with the triangle underneath it. And that connects up to this power supply here. This is multi-voltage, well, 220 or 115 volts. It's already been set to the right one. There's a fuse there and um, socket here that connects to there, although that socket is different to that one. And the lead that connects the two things together is uh, different at both ends. Uh, it's hard to know which uh, way I'm supposed to plug this in, but I suppose the idea is it doesn't really matter. Three pins there and a heck of a lot of sockets on this, but I presume this is a device that's designed for various different pieces of equipment. So it's going to take whichever uh, amount of power it needs from the three pins that will locate in the holes. And of course the whole thing is powered up via a Euro plug. So I don't suppose you can get it wrong, but it just looks a little bit worried when all the sockets are different. But anyway, let's, uh, let's take the cable tie off this and plug it in and see what happens. I was looking for an on button, couldn't find one, and then I realised that it's the tape speed. That's the on as well, so we can choose the speed that turns the device on. So let's put it there, and you can see we've got a green LED now. Now it was supplied without reels, that was something I could have ordered as an option, but I've already got a couple of Ua reels. I don't know if you remember, I bought these because I was going to use them in that Mindhunter tape machine video but I didn't end up using them so I've got two of these I'll only need one of course though because I'll need a, a reel with tape on it and this is the take up reel so uh, these on here are kind of spring loaded you lift them up and uh, up to the top position and then I'll be able to put one of these on the top and then it springs down and holds it in place so there we go, just pop it back up and there it's holding it quite firmly there. Of course the idea is you're holding this quite often sideways so you don't want your tape just flying off like that. Now I do have a blank tape here somewhere, here we are. It's not a full tape, it's something I used a bit of in a different project but hopefully that should just slide on there. Yeah, there we go, so just pop that round. So you can see here how the tape path is drawn on so it goes around the outside of this and it'll just take a straight line through this part here and then onto the take up reel. Notice here there's a switch labelled open and lock. If we move into the open position this panel here is now loose I can perhaps get it open like that there we go and we can have a look. So I think that's there to give you better access to the heads if you wanted to clean them but we don't need to do that now so I'll just put the panel back on and let's thread this tape. While I was waiting for the battery to charge up, which takes about seven hours, I was having a good look through the manual and there's a few things I've noticed in there I haven't pointed out so far. So that's the headphone socket, as you can see there by the symbol under it. But I've seen this on quite a few things. I didn't know what it meant. Well, that is the microphone. That's where my mic's going to plug in. We'll have a look at the mic in a moment. And AV, well, this is the uh, UA 4000 report monitor AV. It's the one that's designed to be connected up to things like um, film cameras and things. There's a sync that happens between that and the camera, or if you do it the other way, between that and a projector to keep the audio in sync. It, it syncs every fourth frame or something. It's all a bit above my pay grade. So we'll move away from that because I'm not going to be plugging anything into that socket. But up here, 
you'll see that we've got an auto level control. So one on there would be to adjust the recording level automatically if you were recording speech because it adjusts it very quickly. However, if you were recording music, you'd put it to number two because the adjustment is slower. Or of course you could just switch it off. Now this switch on the right hand side, not only is it the speed selector, it's also the on off and it's got an off position between each speed. So you can see here, this is off and then that selects a speed and then that's off again and so on. So the speeds that we've got on here, if we look at the bottom left, that's the fastest one. That's seven and a half inches per second or 19 centimeters. And then at the top left, we've got 9.5 centimeters a second, which is three and three quarter inches. Top right, 4.7 centimetres a second, or 1 and 7 eighths. That's the same speed as a standard compact cassette. And then bottom right, that's the slow one. That's half the speed of a compact cassette, which is 2.4 centimetres a second, or 15 sixteenths of an inch. Now, these are the ones that are going to be useful to me. It's why I really bought this machine, is because I wanted to be able to play things at those speeds. And I don't currently have any reel-to-reel -reel machine in the house that would do that. Well, I didn't currently have, I do now. Now there's one feature I probably wouldn't have known about unless I'd have read that manual and that's uh, the light. Once you switch the device on, the light doesn't come on here as standard. Like a lot of these machines, it's to save battery power. You just tap the light button, the light will come on, but it will only remain on for 15 seconds again to preserve the power. However, during those 15 seconds, if you wanted to switch it off again quickly, you could double tap that light switch. And in addition to that, if you double tap it at the start, the light comes on and it stays on. I don't think I'd have figured that out otherwise. Anyway, let's switch that off. On the battery meter here, you can see if I move this switch down, the needle moves into that green section. The further to the right of the green section it is, the higher the power, but I think we're okay there at the moment. And one final feature to mention from the front here that I might not have spotted, well, we've got the volume and the tone controls here. The volume, of course, adjusts the built-in speaker and the tone, well, the more to the left it goes, the more bassy it is, and the more to the right, the more treble. However, it has another feature. It can turn off the speaker because if you were to connect this up to an external speaker, you wouldn't want the internal one in here also playing. So you can just pull it out and that disconnects the audio to the speaker. Now on the side here, we've got a socket label monitor. According to the manual, that socket's for connecting the recorder to an amplifier or preamplifier control center that's equipped with a monitor input. So really that's an audio out. However, this is also an audio out as well as an audio in. It's a combined one. It says here the sockets are combined input and output for connection to a stereo tuner, receiver or amplifier that's equipped with DIN socketry. Each of the accessories has its own little number here, K541 for a, a DIN to DIN lead. And on the back of this uh, brochure, you can see here we've got a nice carrying case there, Z526. I wouldn't mind one of those because it will protect the thing and it keeps everything nice and neat and together. So I'll see if they've got one of those. I doubt it now, but we'll have a look at it. And uh, there's the power adapter and things like that. But the thing that threw me with this, uh, I don't know if you can see this very clearly, 894 printed in Germany. That'll be August 94, surely. Well, I didn't think they were making these things in August 94. I thought they'd stopped in the 80s. So at the start, when I'm going all on about, oh, I've got something from the 80s, look at me, aren't I cool and everything. I'm just talking a crock of rubbish because it looks like they carried on into the 90s. In fact, the new UA report monitor, the monitor bit, by the way, they did these for years, the UA 4000 report with little tiny VU meters. And then this was like a redesign with these big VU meters on the front. I wish I'd been able to get that stereo one. But let's get that microphone out of the case there because I want to do some recording with it. Um, so we've got a stand there and then that's the part that screws onto the stand. And of course it's got a, a DIN plug on the end. I wanted a microphone with a DIN plug on it and uh, you could use other ones of course with an adapter but you really better off not using adapters on things like this because you know, it comes slightly unattached and you're crackling on the audio and all that kind of stuff. So this is much more suitable. And besides which, of course, it's the one that should be used with this machine. Just look at that. That has got some weight to it. That is all metal there and not thin metal, not like some sort of aluminium type thing. It's like steel. That. Got an ice on off switch here. And just look at the branding on there. 
and uh, yeah, that that is a that's a beautiful microphone. I've got a good feeling it's going to have a decent sound quality to it as well. After all, they weren't doing things on the cheap here; they were doing things uh, decent quality. So let's uh, let's plug it in. Let's do the first recording using this microphone. And I'll set the recording speed to seven and a half inches per second. Right, so to check the levels, I'm going to press record. We'll turn the recording level up here and hopefully this will start moving the needle. Yeah, there we go. So that's nine, that's too much. It's uh, peaking out there. So we'll just bring it down a little bit. I'm not going to use the auto level control this time. I want to adjust it manually. So uh, yeah, that seems to be just popping into the red every now and then. So I'll just bring it down a bit. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that seems about right. Okay, so we're going to monitor the tape as well now. So now I'll press stop and then I'll put the pause on. Press record and start at the same time. So we're ready to go now. The pause on this is one that you lift up when you want it to start. So we'll do that now. And I can see that I'm coming through on the tape because the VU meter is moving and it's not going into the red. So I've got it just about set right. I've got a feeling that this is going to sound pretty good actually, especially at seven and a half inches per second. I think you get about half an hour's worth of recording on the tape. I'll have to look at that in the specs later to uh, clarify, but let's stop there. And now we're going to rewind, which will be this one. I've got a tape counter on the front here, so I can see I'm up to approximately the right position. Let us put the speaker on full volume and uh, press play and see what happens. Not a lot. I think I pressed the wrong button. The right oh, okay. There we go. Just about set right. I've got a feeling that this is going to sound pretty good actually, especially at seven and a half inches per second. I think you get about half an hour's worth of recording on the tape. I'll have to look at that in the specs later to uh, clarify, but let's stop there. Yes, yeah, so I've got the uh, mute on the speaker turned on there, but that, that sounded excellent. That sounds better than my normal recordings do. It's a really good microphone, this one. Yeah, so here's the specs, seven and a half inches per second, two times half hour, because as I mentioned, it records half the width of the tape, then you flip it over. So you get an hour's worth of recording on a five inch tape, but with a break in the middle. And then it's two times an hour, two times two hours, two times four hours. You'd only really want to use these bottom two speeds generally on something like this for decent high quality audio. Uh, that is the same as a compact cassette, but it'd be a little bit better because you get more width on the tape. So yeah, I suppose it's not too bad. And again, gotta remember, it's all mono. Okay, now I'm not sure how well this is gonna work out, but here's what's happening. The microphone is going into the tape recorder. The headphone output from the tape recorder is going into the mic input on the camera, and that's what you're listening to at the moment. Now I've turned on the auto level control for speech, which will stop me uh, peeking out, hopefully. But my intention was, I thought, well, I'll give you a bit of a demo of what the tape sounds like uh, when it's playing at different speeds. I'm not too sure how well it's all going to come through on YouTube. At the moment, we're in pause, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it into, well, it's in seven and a half inches per second. I'm going to take the pause off. I'll move you into listening to the tape uh, as it's been recorded. So it's listening to the section just after the section where the record head is. So what you're going to hear is like a fraction afterwards. So my lip sync will no longer match up. I don't even know if that's the right way to say that, but you know what I mean. So let's get it going here. We'll take the pause off. Right, so currently we're still listening to the input. Let's move it on to what the tape is, is hearing. Right, so now you're listening to the tape. So now there'll be a, a fractional delay. And uh, this is what the recording would sound like at seven and a half inches per second. There's a lot of steps in this chain, of course, all these wires and things, things that can pick up interference. But in addition to that, we've got to have all the compression, all that kind of stuff, but you understand. Right, so this is what seven and a half inches per second sounds like. Let's move it across into the slowest speed, 15 sixteenths inches per second. Now, occasionally people really get angry when I mention inches per second, but on tape recorders of this era, it's a standard way to talk about it. The centimeters per second, not as standard, but yeah, I mean, in certain countries, people would don't worry about it. Let's pause and move on. Okay, now the tape reels themselves are moving at uh, like a snail's pace now. In fact, I might better show you. Let me just lift this up. Can you see those spinning around there? Hardly moving. Well, of course they are moving, but yeah, this is what you get when you you know, record at the slowest speed. So you get the maximum amount of recording 
but at the expense of the quality of the recording. I don't know how this sounds. I mean, I haven't listened back to it yet. I'll have a listen myself before I let you listen, in case this has all just been a colossal waste of time. I was just checking I'd switched it on. If I hadn't, that would have been fun, wouldn't it? Okay, so there you go. That's what 15 sixteenths inches per second sounds like compared to the maximum speed, 7.5 inches per second. Right, I've just had a look back at that, and the first thing is, I thought, oh, I should have moved this box out of the background. And the second thing I thought was, I didn't comprehend how much of a delay that would be between the record head and the playhead at the slowest speed. For some reason, it just didn't enter my mind, obvious when you think about it now. But yeah, I just didn't think that there'd be so much of a delay. But there is, and there you go. So that's the difference between the two speeds. Don't know if that was useful to you, but uh, we've done it now anyway, so it's too late. OK, we're back on the lavalier mic and let's just wrap things up. What have I learnt today? Uh, well, first thing is that I had no idea when they stopped making these. I thought in my head it was sort of late 80s, maybe 87, 88, that kind of thing, because reporters were using things like the Wartman WMD6C for recording interviews out and about. The BBC used to use the earlier uh, UA 4000 report. I don't know if they moved on to the report monitor. I think by then they'd moved on to other things, you know, videotape, all that kind of stuff. So to see that they this was made in the second half of the 1990s is just a bit of a, a shock to me but a nice surprise because that means it's newer than I thought it was it of course it looks brand new it's been checked over and uh, if you wanted one of these you too could get one I'll put links in the video description I've got no affiliation with these chaps at all I just thought it was amazing when I found someone online that had new stocks of old reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders so I'll share that link with you if you want as well no not affiliated as I say another thing I learned microphone very good quality i mean really rich sound so i mean they'd sell those separately if you just want one of those but of course didn't plug on the end you'd have to mess around with converters more likely than not and all i've got left to do now i think with this one is i'm going to do the uh outro yeah the play out bit with the tune that i normally use the one from the youtube audio library but i've recorded it onto this at seven and a half inches per second and i'm going to play it back over the credits at the end so uh, i think that's it for the moment uh, as always thanks for watching